Hey everyone, it's Matt here with Nightrun Studio, and in this short Unity tutorial video, we're gonna get your character from looking like this to looking something a little more like this. We're gonna add idle and run animations. Let's get started. So the first thing that you're gonna need in your scene is actually just a sprite sheet. Here you can see I've got a simple one for my character, and while I've got quite a few animations in, for example, my run cycle here, you can have as few as two and this will work just fine. Now the problem with having a sprite sheet is if I just drag it into my game, it's a mess. And so we need to fix that up. So first thing I'm gonna do is click on my sprite sheet and set it to multiple sprite mode. If I apply that, first of all, it's going to disappear. And to fix that, what we can do is head to our sprite editor. We're gonna now slice this, so you can click slice. And instead of automatic, let's do grid by cell size. I happen to know that my character is on a 46 by 46 grid, and so I'm gonna pick that size. You can leave everything else unchecked, though if you think you might add more sprites into the empty spaces later, you might wanna keep your empty rects. I'll just leave mine unchecked. Then you can click slice and apply those changes. As you can see, we can now click this arrow and we've got all of our separate sprites. I'm just gonna grab one and drag them into my scene. As you can see, that's still not looking quite right. In order to fix this, what we want to do is actually head back to our assets and grab the parent object of all these images. Now my game has a style of 32 pixels per unit, and so if I apply that, my character will get larger, and he'll actually fit the scene appropriately. With that said, you'll notice he's quite blurry. We can change that with our filter mode and set it to point no filter. Looking better already, but now there's some discoloration going on. And to fix that, we can just change the format to RGBA 32-bit. All right, at this point, we're ready to actually get animating. So I'm just going to make sure to click on my player here in the hierarchy, and then I can open up my animation window. If you don't have one, you may need to go up to Window, go down to Animation, and select Animation. I'm actually just gonna dock my window just above the project window here so that I can see my sprites and animation at the same time. So now while clicked on my player, I'm gonna hit Create. And in here, I'm just gonna call this first one idle. We now have keyframes that are gonna appear here, and so we can click whichever frames we want and put them in. I know that mine are 20 to 24, so I'm just gonna drag all those in at once. Now at the moment, there's one image per frame, so if I hit play, it is very fast. So I'm just gonna select all of these, drag the outside to about one second. At the moment, things are gonna be looking pretty good. However, there's one problem, and it catches a little bit. That's because each of these frames lasts for 15 frames or so, except this very last one, which lasts for exactly one frame before looping. To fix that, you just need to grab your first animation and then add that in at the end. Now each frame should last for the right amount of time. All right, with our animation complete, we can dock that window back down here. And we're now ready to go to our animator. Unity's animator is just a state machine that kind of gives us a graphic representation of what's happening at any time. If idle is the first animation you've ever created, then it will be in orange with a line going to it from entry. This just means it's gonna play automatically when you start the game. If for some reason there's other animations and idle is not your default, you can just right click and go to set as layer default state. At this point now, if you play your game, your character will idle. No code involved at this point as there's only one state. Let's take a look at how to get this character running now. All right, so as we did before, we're gonna click on our player. Let's move our animation pane back up again. And this time where it says idle here, we're gonna click and at the bottom we can create a new clip. I'm gonna call this one run. Again, I'm gonna grab all of the keyframes that I need for this one. And I'm gonna stretch them out over an appropriate amount of time. Once more, don't forget to grab that first frame and repeat it again at the end. So with the first step done and our animation created, we can dock that back below. And now we're gonna to head to our animator. This is where things start to get a little bit more complicated as we need to know when to run and when to idle. So at the moment, I want to create a transition from idle so I can right click, make transition and head up to run. If you click on this transition, you'll notice at the bottom here that there's this conditions area, which is currently empty and there's nothing we can put there. So we need to create a parameter. If you head over to the left, you can click on parameters, hit plus, and we're gonna create a new one. This is going to be a float, which we're just gonna call horizontal. Essentially, if our horizontal input is greater than 0.1, we want to go to running. So I'm going to hit plus over here in conditions. Make sure horizontal greater than 0.1. I'll then create a transition back down. Click on it. Add a condition, and this time we'll say if horizontal is less than 0.1. 
Now one other thing to do while we're here is if you open up settings, you'll notice there's this exit time. And essentially when we stop pushing the button, we want our player to immediately go back to idle. So we're going to turn off exit time and also get rid of the tr transition duration. We'll do the same thing when we start running. Now just before we get into the code, we need to make sure that our player is properly set up with a collider. I'm using a Capsule Collider 2D as well as a rigid body. And I'll just take a second here to make sure my constraints are set with freezing the Z rotation so my character doesn't fall over. At this point, we're ready to get started coding. I've got a simple player movement script that I've already set up that I'm just going to plug in here and make sure it's connected to my rigid body. But you can use whichever player movement script you've got in your game already. Now my movement script is very simple. It just has a reference to the rigid body, one for speed, and then it takes in my horizontal value of whatever direction I'm pressing, stores it in this variable, horizontal, and then applies it to my rigid body. So in order to run animations, we're going to need to make a reference to our animator. We'll make this a public reference called anim. Then if we come down into update, we're going to set things up so that right after we take in our horizontal button press, we set the horizontal value in our animator. You remember that long, long ago we set up this horizontal parameter inside of our animator. That's what we're speaking to now. So we're going to tell it that the horizontal in the animator should be set to be equal to the horizontal here in the script, which is equal to our button press. So if we're pressing right, our horizontal value will be greater than 0.1 and we'll run. The only problem now is that when we press left, we get a negative value, and our animator in Unity doesn't quite know how to interpret that. We're going to fix this by setting up our horizontal value to actually be equal to the math function dot absolute of our button press. So if we are pressing left, it will actually translate that into a positive number. So whether we go left or right, our player will in fact run. So now before we run our test, we'll just look at the script here. And you can see that it wants to know which animator it's speaking to. So we want to drag our player's animator into that box. All right, at this point, our animations are working well for moving right and left and he idles when we stop. The only problem at this point is obviously when I go left, he's not rotating. So let's just quickly look at how to add that into our code. Now to get him facing in the right direction, we need to keep track of what direction he's facing. So we'll make a public bool called facing right. And since my player starts off facing right, I'll make that true. Then down in update, right below where we set our animator's horizontal value, we'll check to see if our player is facing right and our horizontal input is less than zero meaning we're pressing left. If so, we've got a problem. We need to flip the player because we're not facing the same direction we're pressing. Next, we're going to add an OR operator here, the double lines, which just means if either of these two statements are true, we'll flip. And here we'll just make it if we're facing right false and our horizontal is greater than zero. So we're actually facing left but pressing right. Now, if either of these two things are true, we need to flip. Now, to just show you how this flip method is going to work, Essentially what we want to do is just take the player's transform rotate value and make the Y go 180 degrees. So down in flip then we'll just go transform dot rotate and here we're just going to make 0 on the X, 180 on the Y, and 0 on the Z. This will just always flip him completely from side to side. We'll then just let our facing right value know that it's no longer facing right. This will also do the opposite, make a non facing right value equal facing right. And with that little tweak, our player should now be running no problem and switching directions as well. All right, I hope you found that one helpful. If you have, please be sure to like or subscribe to the channel. Till next time, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.